I welcome the efforts by the Foreign Secretary, the Deputy Foreign Secretary and the Minister of the Middle East North Africa who have been in and out of the Middle East over the last two weeks a lot of time in order to hear from our allies. But as we see the launch of the RAFA offensive, what reassurances have been received that aid access will be protected? But most of all, the protection of aid workers. We cannot see the entire aid industry flee from RAFA junction, as is currently being predicted. Al Mawasi is also being speculated as a safe zone for civilians, but there is no infrastructure. It is what is essentially a desert, and it wasn't safe last time, as we saw when the British charity Medley for Palestinians was bombed, for which we still have had no answer. Finally, have we had any proof of life for those Israeli citizens who have now been held for seven months, many of whom for which there has been no proof of life since at least day 20? What are we doing to push for that proof of life which families so desperately need? Well, my honourable friend who chairs the Foreign Affairs Select Committee is absolutely right on her last uh, point. We uh, seek uh, proof of life. The families to whom she refers are desperate for information, but that information has uh, not been uh, forthcoming. Um, in terms, Mr Speaker, of uh, what she said about uh, Rafa, we are deeply concerned about the humanitarian position in Rafa. There would have to be a plan which respected international humanitarian law, and we have uh, yet to see such a plan. And the immediate priorities I set out in my opening remarks must be a humanitarian pause in the fighting. And as the House uh, well knows, such a pause would allow us to get the uh, hostages out, potentially, but also to get aid into Gaza.